This Sunday, Russia is electing a president. There is very little doubt that that would be the first term, term of current President Vladimir Putin. Uh, one of the opposition leaders, Alexei Navalny, isn't allowed to run, uh, though people are following what's happening with another opposition candidate, Ksenia Sapchak, who just uh, announced that she would create her party. Yet still, uh, the campaign isn't really extremely exciting, though, um, Anyways, the elections in Russia are important and we are here to, um, I'm currently in Moscow and we're trying to understand what that could mean, what this election could bring and maybe if there would be some indicators of the change. And I'm currently speaking to uh, Mikhail Fish Fishman, the famous Russian journalist, uh, TV anchor in the studio of TV Rain. Thanks a lot for um, host having me here. And Misha, so um, really what are these what, is, what do we expect from these elections? You know, what probably uh, the, the, the Western audience also should understand? I think that this uh, upcoming election is specific um, from the point of view that it's the first election when um, Vladimir Putin doesn't have to fight. He has no one to struggle with anymore. He is already a total winner. And um, um, the question of power was the most important question for Vladimir Putin during his entire uh, stay at the helm, uh, starting from two, 2000. But at every single moment, uh, his uh, power, his authority was not absolute. There was still, there was still a position. There was still uh, um, a positional elite around him. There was still he had to, he had to um, constrain media. He had to constrain um, governors, oligarchs. Uh, he was always um, uh, fighting for his future on the top of uh, Russian power structure. And now it's, this fight is over. It, it's over for already, I would say, at least a couple of years. I'd say that he achieved this new status that he doesn't see any threat to his own ambition and to his own status uh, after Trump won the election in America because he was really scared that's my strong belief, that uh, Hillary Clinton, if she would won the election, would build this united Western Front, and he would still have to fight this uh, joint uh, and very powerful enemy. With Trump, it's not the case. And since then, uh, he um, relaxed. <laughs> he, it's, uh, the, uh, this battle is over. And... Um, so this, is, this election is about nothing uh, since then, because uh, it only will sort of confirm this status quo in which Vladimir Putin is the one and only authority absolutely unaccountable to any kind of force and absolutely unpredictable with any kind of uh, decision-making uh, existing only in his head and nothing else. And that's this kind of new situation that we have for some time already, which will be confirmed, will be confirmed this Sunday during the election with its predictable outcome. Uh, these days, we are looking at what's happening between London and Moscow because of the assassination uh, of former um, former Russian intelligence agent Skripal, and you know, we have a very tough answer from London. What it all could mean, how the situation is seen here, does it have any impact on the campaign here, and you know, how do you read it? It basically replaced the campaign during this last week, since it's just started totally unexpectedly for, for us, and we don't know to what extent it was unexpectable uh, uh, to, to the Kremlin. And, uh, uh, all uh, Russian propaganda, all Russian official media immediately engaged in this issue and, uh, of course, presented uh, as uh, that Russia is under attack. 
with no proof, no evidence, no real reason. Um, the British just are looking for a pretext to, to start a new campaign against Russia, and this is how the world is now. And this is uh, this new global situation that we are in. And this is the situation when Vladimir Putin has to lead us in this new circumstances. Can you explain more? Because it looks like that the, the London is, is indeed can uh, act in some way that would be harmful to Russia if you speak about some kind of a tougher sanctions or, uh, you know, freezing the assets of the Russian businessman in London. But what you say uh, says something opposite, that in that regard, nobody is really scared here. Nobody is really in the extent like concerned about what the West could do. No, uh, I don't see well, the, the thing is, the thing is, the situation is changing while we are speaking, and this is important uh, because it's escalating uh, before our eyes right now. But uh, up to now, um, no. Uh, I think the Kremlin presumed that uh, um, that um, the action that London would take uh, would be harmless, which it was. Up to this, up to this moment, uh, um, Moscow is used to this kind of diplomacy wars, wars and uh, expulsion of uh, of embassy staff. It's not the first time, not a big deal anymore. Royal family is not coming to Moscow for the World Cup. Who cares? Here, here in Moscow, no one would. We still don't know what kind of sanctions uh, they would uh, will um, impose on Russian businesses connected to the state. So it's, it remains to be seen. But uh, I think um, in Moscow, um, Moscow authorities assumed that it, nothing serious could happen. What just happened with Boris Johnson directly accusing Vladimir Putin of standing behind this attack is changing the situation and makes it different. It uh, requires a response, a re very strong retaliation and turns into it into a crisis that uh, I don't even remember uh, Russia engaged in before. So it's some kind of new level of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, struggle. And that's the moment when we will see what is or can be Kremlin really be afraid of. Is there, are there any limits? Because for now, at, up to, yes, uh, sanctions, yes, uh, expulsion from G8, whatever. It still was kind of more rhetorical than real. Well, now it turns into something real. And that's when we will see how far um, is the Kremlin really ready to go. And being very brief, so what the, the whole, you know, the, what are the main issues for the Kremlin today, especially still speaking about the elections, you know, as a Ukrainian, I would ask, to ask to what, ex to what extent the war in Donbass, the, uh, the Crimea, or um, even Syria um, is discussed, is considered, what are the things which are on the core of the campaign? You're talking about uh, about what's the campaign's agenda? In yeah, agenda. I'd say it's uh, most uh, up to this, until this crisis with London, the its most uh, important, visible and impressive point was this presentation during the so-called State of the Union address of Vladimir Putin when he presented this new nuclear weaponry and, uh, and, and Arsenal. That's when we got finally what this sort of election, if it can be called an election, is, is about. Uh, the war in Syria was uh, triumphantly ended again by Vladimir Putin in December, so it's over. And it's uh, perceived by, um, um, by in, in Russia as a great success, uh, for sure. Uh, Ukraine, is not really something that uh, is um, part of this campaign or some part of the of political agenda. It's not a campaign. It's a political agenda that that is being built between uh, before our eyes. But it's not. Um, I I believe totally connected to the election. Well, of course, yes. There, there are these um, goals and uh, 
tasks of turnout and votes uh, delivered for Vladimir Putin. But Vladimir Putin himself and his aides, they think about something else. They think about what they're gonna do. Uh, and it's not connected to this election, not so ever.